the PA and the league never agree on anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the one thing they do agree on <laughs> yeah, is sure. they want to try to drive some change. And that's one of the reasons why it, it's taken so long mm -hmm. uh, because they want to be thoughtful and they want to be considerate and they want to gather the data. Like you don't make decisions without understanding the culture and the community. And that's something that they've really taken their time. And you know, your point about Barry Trotz, it's not a knee jerk decision. Like this, that has been compiled over the last two years. I remember when Kim Davis was first hired by the National Hockey League mm. and she had someone from Spike Lee's group reach out to me to have a conversation about the culture of hockey. And just, you know, we, we spoke for like an hour understanding what I went through, my experiences, what I thought could be improved within the game. And they were going to go out there and talk to different people within the game itself, maybe black players, players of color, to get their opinions and what their thoughts were to then formulate a game plan. You just can't say, well, there's a problem with hockey without understanding what the challenges are, what the problems are, and then devising that game plan and going forward. So I've got to give them a lot of credit. I mean, honestly, the, the PA has been great. They know there's been a problem. The NHL understands there's a problem. And we, see, we've both been part of hockey's for everyone for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that the league hasn't focused on before, but there's even more of a focus now because the world is changing, and it's a great place to be right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, this has been a really important conversation that we've made sure that we've continued having as well. And Weeksy, we appreciate you so much coming on and being part of this and helping uh, just creating an impact because I think that that's the most important thing going forward if we really want to see change. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. I think that, you know, you guys both made a lot of great points and, um, you know, we want to create an environment where everybody's welcome and everybody's proud of who they are. And they're proud of who their parents are, what their background is, cultural, uh, racial, gender, sexual orientation. And we don't want to be exclusive. Like, we, you know, I, we know what it is to be on the wrong side of the wrong direct messages. We know what it is to be on the wrong side of, you know, fans yelling racial epithets and or, uh, you know, coaches marginalizing opportunity, general managers not really giving fair market value on contracts, 30 cents on the dollar, 40 cents on the dollar. It was those, those days for us anyways, and, and Anson and I specifically, and other people, other women and people from different demographics, but as visible minorities and as black people, that's, that's something that as we, again, go forward in our game with the growth of our game, that's something that has to go to the, by the wayside. And the environment has to be one where it's the best of the best, for everybody and the best of the best for all the right reasons but that starts with creating that that environment for people where everybody can thrive because our sport's awesome you know we're partial to our sport but and we have friends in every league and different roles but our sport's awesome but it's only going to continue to get better can i quickly too highlight ryan reeves also right i mean revo was amazing mm -hmm. like weeks you know it took a lot of guts to stand up there like we could both talk about this we're not playing the game anymore mm -hmm. and yes we have a platform we could have these discussions with michelle and you know other people in the game of hockey but revo's still playing oh. he's still in the bubble and he took a stand and that took a lot of guts yeah and i had a conversation with revo yesterday because we differed on how that we would approach this but we both believe in the same thing mm -hmm. and we had a great conversation like he said ace I didn't agree with you thinking that we're playing or we should play. However, I understood why you said it with using your platform and mm -hmm. also using the arenas as voting centers. He goes, mm -hmm. I, I got that now. I understand. And I said to Revo, I never said that I had a problem with guys playing or not playing. I just said we should have a better idea than a bigger plan. But he said, I want you to understand why I wanted to sit out because I knew there'd be airtime you guys would have to fill. And if there's no hockey on, people having these conversations. Why aren't these guys playing right now? What's going on? Mm. And he said, you guys end up filling that with 30 minutes, having a conversation about this. So he nailed it. But yeah. the key thing here was we had a disagreement initially, but then we talked about it as men. We weren't slinging arrows. No. You know, we weren't yelling publicly at each, at each other. Like there's so many perceived leaders within the game. And we, see, we both know, we play the guys that everyone says, oh, that guy's wearing an A, he's wearing an A, he's a leader, he's a leader. And we know behind the scenes, that guy's not a leader. It's exactly. perceived leadership. <laughs> now, there's so many guys out there like that. So a guy like Ryan Reeves putting himself out there like that, and also, too, he has the ability, and he's shown that he's an intelligent person. Yes, he's he adapted his game. He came in as a tough guy, a knuckle buster, just beating guys up, just dragging guys out. But he saw the game was changing, 
and he adapted his game. Now he's a very effective player for the Vegas Golden Knights. And there's a lot of players that never played in the NHL because they were stubborn. Mm -hmm. Not because they didn't have the skills. They were stubborn. And they weren't good teammates, and they weren't able to adapt their game. So I just want to give Ryan Reeves a shout-out because, Weeks, you know how tough it is to play in this league. Mm. And you know it's tough to speak out while you're playing. And the mm -hmm. fact he did that, I mean, it was amazing. Amazing. Amazing stuff. I echo that. I'd also add, too, quickly that um, – and we've, we are, we're always, I said this on the air too, we're always indebted to the people that came before us and, you know, we respect them. Uh, anybody that played in the league worked in the league, of course. And then certainly during our time, the players that we played with and against, but none of those two groups would have done what this group did. None. Like if you think to your playing days, Ants, and think of the odd person, the rare person on your team that you could have had one of these conversations with, in a respectful way and in a meaningful way where they're open and objective. I mean, would you count, depending on the team you're on, one, two, maybe three guys, maybe, uh, on, on said season, per se. And for these players and for the white players to step up and stand shoulder to shoulder with us as black people and people of color in general, but uh, specifically for the players, as you just mentioned, that are still currently playing, and for those white players to stand shoulder to shoulder with them in solidarity of us and also greater society and communities. Uh, I, I, I never thought I would ever see the day where that would happen because for the longest time, again, we were pretty limited in the amount of people that we can confide in. And we were very fortunate to have a few people along the way, as you know, whether it was Stan Butler for you, maybe it was Ron, late Ron Mason for you at Michigan State or some different people that we've had. But this type of advocacy from people that don't necessarily fall on the color wheel that where we do, but to stand in solidarity, in solidarity with us is, I, I don't know, I, I, it's been difficult to keep even emotions in check on the air by being overwhelmed by their support. That means so much too. Hopefully it's just the beginning. Kevin, thank no. you so much again for stopping by. We really appreciate the conversation. No, my pleasure. Thank you guys for having it. Great job by both of you. Thanks so much, guys.